Hey, what's up, users? This is John at Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to go over the new update to the Muse Motion 2 widget. It is now Muse Motion 2 uh, 1.2. Um, so there's a few updates. You can now hover over the element and have it uh, transform or animate. And then once you remove the mouse off the element, the animation will play in reverse. And I've also changed the on scroll setup. Um, so if we go to museforyoushop.com and then here I'll click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal you can click here and subscribe with PayPal and the only widget that's not in the subscription is the Muse Morph SVG morphing widget um, because it is powered by Greensock's Morph SVG plugin technology um, so it is a standalone widget um, and this one is not included in the subscription um, if you did want to purchase the widget individually, you can click on the widget, and here you can click Add to Cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Um, so if I scroll down here to the change log, um, here we see we have Muse Motion 2 widget 1.2, and the updates are added the on hover with reverse option. Uh, this allows, <laughs> excuse me, this allows the element to play on hover and then play in reverse when the mouse leaves the element. And there's a new on scroll setup, and there's the ability to add indicators for on scroll. Uh, this allows you to see where the element will animate within the browser. Uh, so I have an Adobe Muse website here. Uh, I have the home page open, and the first thing I'm going to do is type in MM2. Um, so here I have the Muse Motion 2 widget 1.2, and if you don't see the library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library, and this will bring up the library panel. Uh, so here the first thing I want to do is bring in the ad first, so I'll, so I'll click hold and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. And here I'll bring in the Muse Motion 2 2D transformations, because uh, I just want it to be a 2D tra transformation, I'm not going to do uh, any 3D at the moment. Uh, so here I'll go into my finder and I'll just bring in a, an element here. So I'll bring in this image of this plant here and I'll just place it right in here um, and I'll center it. So here we have this image and I'll assign the graphic style name that's in the widget. Uh, so the graphic style name is motion one. So here I'll click on the image and I'll go to graphic styles. I'll click on create a new graphic style. I'll double click and I'll say motion one. All right, so there this has been assigned to this image here, uh, the widget. Uh, so here I'll open the widget and for select motion start, we now have this new option on hover with reverse. So I'll select this here and I don't want it to repeat, so I'll say zero. Negative, negative one repeats it infinitely, uh, but zero is no repeat. And I'll uncheck enable reverse play because it's not repeating anyway, so I don't need it to play in reverse. And then here I'll have the image rotate, so I'll say enable rotate, and I'll say rotate to 360 degrees. Uh, so now I'll go to file, preview page in browser, and when I hover over, it rotates, and then when I leave my mouse, it rotates back. Uh, so this can work really well for, let's say, social media icons. You can have a social media, and when someone hovers over it, it can hover, it can go back in reverse when they leave their mouse off of it, and it can make for a really nice effect. Uh, here, I'll just change the time scale to three, so it's a little bit faster. And let's see how that looks. Hover, and then it hovers back when I move my mouse off of it. Uh, so that's a fun effect. Um, it can really make for an interesting website and uh, or just really nice effects on your website. So the next thing I'll go over is the on scroll option. So here in the widget, I'm just going to say select motion start and I'm going to say on scroll and uh, I'm going to add the indicators. The indicators will let you see when the uh, the element will animate on scroll and then we'll have the repeat motion on scroll and we'll just have it rotate as well on scroll. Okay, so I'll go to File, uh, Preview Page and Browser, see how it looks, and I'll scroll down. So as we can see, the trigger is all the way here at the bottom. Um, so let's say we wanted to change the trigger point. Uh, here on the on-scroll offset, I'll say 0.5 so that the trigger is in the middle of the browser. Uh, it's kind of in percentage, 0 is the top of the browser, and 100 and 1 is the bottom of the browser. So it's in percentages in that sense, or like you know, 0.5 is 50%, 0 0.6 would be like 60%. So that just changed a little bit to kind of go with the new on-scroll setup. Yeah, on-scroll uh, setup. And the on-scroll duration is how how long you want the on-scroll to be. And, and I'll demonstrate this a little bit better. So let's see how this looks. And here we have the trigger point. This is the indicator. 
So if I scroll, we see we have the start position instead at the top of the element. And if I scroll, uh, we need more scroll space. So let me let me add more scroll space to the website. So here I'll scroll. Here is the starting position and here's the ending position. So I'll scroll and once it reaches the trigger, it rotates. So once it it comes into the uh, so once it comes in between the start and end position, it will animate. So there we go, and we can just have it keep animating on scroll. Um, if you only wanted to have it uh, repeat once, you would just uncheck repeat motion on scroll, and then I'll see how this looks. And then we scroll, and we can see it doesn't scroll anymore. It just happens once. Um, and you can add an uh, an alpha to it, an auto alpha, which is like opacity. So if I go to rotate and I say uh, animation start from, and then the auto alpha I'll change to zero, and then I went to site and browser, but I'll scroll, it fades in, and then it animates on scroll. So that's a lot of fun there. And if I wanted to make the duration uh, different as well, if I said you know 600 pixels, we would have more space. For that element to animate in just like that looks good and I'll just change the repeat motion on scroll just like that okay there we go looks good so it keeps repeating uh, on scroll and perfect um, if you do have breakpoints on the lower breakpoints the auto alpha doesn't work as well um, but I do recommend keeping it simple on mobile um, I recommend a lot of these effects just for desktop. If it's a simple effect uh, on mobile, uh, it could work really well. I do recommend on mobile to start the trigger at the bottom. Um, that way the user, like as soon as they scroll uh, from the bottom, as soon as the element reaches the bottom, the element will animate and there won't be any lag or delay because if it waits till it reaches like the middle of the phone, you know, you might see the, the element before it animates and it just could be a little bit weird. So you can set the trigger to one here at the bottom and it'll have a really nice effect on mobile. Uh, but again, I do recommend keeping it simple on mobile. Um, it does still work if you add breakpoints, which is great. So, you know, if I say 768 and I preview, let's just make the browser a little bit smaller. Let's do that again. There we go. So we can see it still works really well on breakpoints. Um, just on mobile, I'd recommend either keeping it simple or starting the trigger at the bottom so that the element doesn't show before it animates and um, it looks really well. Um, so yeah, I did make a video and I think I'll, I will make another video. When you're on mobile, you usually don't wanna see too many effects. You just wanna get information. Um, but for desktop, these, these animations are great. And this new on-scroll setup has been added to the sequence setup as well. Uh, for the Muse Motion 2 uh, widget. So here for the uh, sequence, you can trigger the sequence on scroll and you can add the indicators. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. I just wanted to go over the on hover with reverse option and the new on scroll indicators and it does work on breakpoints. Um, and for mobile, I just you know recommend having the trigger at the bottom. I think I've said that quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions or anything about the widget, let me know. Uh, send me an email. I do make my email pretty available. It's john at museforyoushop.com. Um, I'll, I'll be happy to help if you're working with the widgets and you need any help with the widgets. Um, I'll be happy to help. Or if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below. Uh, there's also a community section on the widget pages as well. If you scroll down um, on the widget page, you'll see the community section or you know you can ask questions there as well. So that's it for this video tutorial. I will be coming out with more update videos. I have been working a lot on widgets and I you know really appreciate the feedback. Uh, I just want to make, make sure that these widgets work really well for you uh, as you're desi designing your Adobe Muse website. Yeah, so there's going to be quite a few more uh, update videos uh, in the next uh, couple of days or so. Uh, so to access this widget, you simply go to here I'll open a new window. You simply go to museforyoushop.com and then here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to use PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Um, if you are a subscriber and you need your login info, you can click here and have the login info uh, be, re be resent to your email or have it yeah sent to your email. Um, the only widget that's not in the subscription is the Muse Morph SVG Morphing widget. Uh, because it is powered by GreenSox Morph SVG plugin technology. Uh, so this is this is a standalone widget and uh, it's the only widget not in the subscription. 
Um, if you did want to purchase the widget individually, you could click here on the Muse Motion 2 widget, and here you can click Add to Cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Um, and here are the updates as well, here at the bottom, and some preview pages, and down here are just a bunch of videos that I've created to really show how to use the widget. Um, and here is the community section as well. Um, so you can you know, ask questions in the comment section below or in the uh, community section here as well. All right, so I'll scroll back up here. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.